Hello everyone and welcome back to the Slow Car Salon. Today we're working on Jeff's 83 Celica GTS and we're doing a dual row timing chain upgrade. So let's get started. All right, so let's start by taking a closer look at what we're going to be working with here. So this is the LCE dual row timing chain kit. They give you pretty much everything you need, including the timing cover, all the chains, seals, new bolts. Uh, in this case, we also have a new oil pump. Definitely going to make sure that you have the new oil pump drive gear that goes inside of the oil pump and a new water pump and basically every other gasket that you're going to need. And in the case of Jeff's car, he's already taken most everything apart. Power steering, AC, alternator, everything is off. Even the head is off. The motor is already set to TDC and everything is pretty much ready to go back in. So this might even be a useful guide if say, you were doing the same thing and you left your car alone for weeks and forgot how everything goes together. So this should be a pretty comprehensive guide on how it all works. So to get started, we actually need a bungee cord and this is actually going to hold up the timing gear and keep the chain tension down here. So we're gonna put the gear on the end of this bungee cord once we get kind of everything routed up with the tensioner in place and everything like that. And then this will keep the gear up and out of the way of everything also with the guides in so that when we go and slot the timing cover in and put the head on, it's not going to interfere and then nothing will be all slack and this will make the install much, much easier. So let's get started with that. So Jeff is just checking out his new parts. Is it a good smell or is it a bad smell? I like it. New parts have a very good smell, I think, too. All right, let's get to work. All right, so the timing chain, gears, tensioner, guides, and oil pump drive are all on. Now, a quick note about the alignment of the chain with the gears. You should have a single silver link lined up with the dot there, centered on the dot for the lower gear. And then on the upper gear, you should have a dot centered between two silver links, like so. And see, you can see how the bungee cord is holding everything up and keeping everything tensioned here. We already put the tensioner in as well, torqued down to nine foot-pounds on those M8 by 40 millimeter long bolts. Guides are in, the curved one goes on the left side, flat one goes on the right side. And of course we made sure to put washers on the little uh, brand new hex head bolts there. So at this point we're pretty much ready to start getting the timing cover and its gaskets and everything else on. Now next we can start preparing our timing cover by working on the oil pump. As this is a brand new oil pump, of course make sure you have a new oil pump seal or front main seal. If you're reusing your old oil pump, of course make sure to get a good quality aftermarket or OEM front seal. And you're gonna get a seal puller or something to pull the old seal out. And then to get the new seal in, Jeff is gonna take this, get some oil on it, all around the outside edge of the seal. like so. And then slot it in there and using our old seal out of the old oil pump, and if you don't have a punch or any large socket that will fit around the uh, outer diameter here, not on the seal lip there, but on this outer diameter of the seal here, uh, you can use that, but we're just gonna use the old seal facing down and a non-marring hammer, just a rubber mallet, and to knock the new one into place. With the oil or grease on the outside of the new seal lip, it should not take very much effort at all to do this. Make sure to go around and hit opposite sides as you work and tapping it in so that you don't get one edge of the seal in the oil pump and the other side is sticking out. And with that, the oil seal is now fully installed and ready to be slotted onto the timing cover with a brand new O-ring that's oiled. We wanna make sure the O-ring is not dry. Make sure to put a little bit of Vaseline or oil or something on it so that any surfaces that are, have a sharp edge on them don't accidentally cut it. It'll kind of just roll and slip off instead. So we can throw this with its oil pump gear. It has to be slotted in there right on top. Dowels will help to align it. Now we can get this whole thing in the engine. All right, so the timing cover is ready. 
Jeff is just preparing all the different bolts that go in because according to the little guide from LCE, there are different sizes and they go in different and specific places. So make sure to follow that. I'll try to post a PDF or link or something for this guide so it's to hand. Maybe you can even mimic this uh, same setup with the bolt lengths with your OEM bolts, but for, for now we're just using the OEM hardware. Before we slot this on, we have to put some gasket maker in these little corners. Uh, where the timing cover uh, plate and the oil pump interface. So for that, again, we got the good stuff, the Toyota 103 seal packing, formed in place gasket or FIPG. We're just gonna place a small bead of those along the bottom and then put the timing cover on. Of course, not forgetting to put in our new gaskets. Okay, so the timing cover and the oil pump are slotted on. Now we did have a little bit of an issue with this bolt right here. They recommended using an M10 uh, bolt, 65 millimeters long, but it ended up bottoming out in this hole and ended up crushing the threads on the new bolt. So what we did is we took an old OEM bolt and just stacked some washers on it to clear the extra gap. And that seemed to work fine. It seems sketchy, but this way we can at least maintain the correct torque on the bolt. Everywhere else we have new bolts all along the sides and whatnot. And on the oil pump, I would also recommend with the oil pump seal on the back that interfaces with the timing cover that you get some grease or Vaseline on it somehow so it sticks into place because it's re really, really difficult to finagle in there. Otherwise, that's now pretty much good to go. But I think now we can slot the head on. All right, so we've got the head ready to go. Jeff is just cleaning up the surface of the cylinder block so we can put a new head gasket on there, just a standard graphite one. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna remove the bungee cord from the timing chain. I'm gonna hold the bottom of the chain together to keep kind of everything taut. Jeff is gonna then lower the head down on over everything, making sure that it gets past the gear. And then once, it get, once it's exposed past the gear, then we're gonna grab the top of it again to make sure it's making sure nothing's gonna like fall down or misalign with the, with the gear and the chain everything on the, and everything on there. So that's next. and the head is on. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna loosen the cam caps here and get the cam rotated in such a way that I can easily attach it to the cam gear here, get it all bolted together, put the cam distributor gear uh, in here, which basically is what holds it all together, and then we'll put the rocker assembly on and put the head bolts on. All right, timing chain, sprocket, and distributor gear is all attached. Put the rocker uh, assembly on top. Now, we're gonna have to put the head bolts in and torque everything down. Of course, don't forget to do that if you haven't already. You gotta, do, you gotta torque this uh, little bolt down here that interfaces the head with the timing cover before you do this little uh, gear here. Anyways, so now we're gonna put the head bolts in, all eight. Make sure all the tappets on your rockers are loose. Of course, these will tighten up a little bit as the rocker shaft gets compressed down, but that's not a big deal. We're gonna make sure of though is that the ends of our head bolts are dipped in engine oil first, and then we're gonna go with this usual pattern of uh, torquing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Also, while doing the torquing in three stages, first 20, then 40, then 60 or I think it was 50, between 58 and 65 for the final rating, I believe. But we're gonna do that in three stages following the usual head bolt torquing order. Also make sure to get the cruise control actuator off that bracket there because it will cover this hole for the head bolt because it'll just, you won't just want to be able to slot it in there. So make sure to do that and then proceed. Okay, all the head bolts are in. We've just snugged them down with the ratchet. And now Jeff is going to take the torque wrench. He's gonna set it to 20 foot pounds. And once he's done with that, we're gonna go in the same order as described before. I'll do it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I was getting in your way there, I apologize. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 
20, huh? 20. First round is 20. There we go, click, click. That's the end of round one. Now, next is 40, and then we're gonna do another round of torquing all around. There we go. Now, that's the end of our second round, 40 pounds. And for our last one, we're just gonna go with 60. The spec is somewhere between 58 to 62. So we're just gonna go right bang in the middle with 60 and begin our third round. Now, a couple of torquing tips here. You wanna really make sure that your tool is perpendicular with the bolt, as in the lever of the bar. So you wanna make sure it's completely straight, flat on, and you're making a nice 90 degree angle with the tool against the bolt because that will give you a very accurate torque reading and making sure you're not pulling past where it clicks because that will make you mean you actually gave it a higher torque. So once you once you basically anticipate the click, pull, and you know you're getting close by the feel of it and then click, 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 click. You don't want to pull past where it goes click and then you move it more. So just be careful about that when you're torquing these bolts down. Okay, all the head bolts are done. Jeff is just going by and checking them making sure they are all up to 60 just by checking for the click, not tightening them down anymore. So in this case, the order doesn't particularly matter. He's just checking them, verifying that the torque is correct. And that means we're pretty much good to go. And that is it. I think that's pretty much all we have time for today. Of course, Jeff will have to now tackle the rest of the rebuild and putting everything back together. But main thing is I wanted to highlight the whole double row timing chain install and kind of tips and tricks on how to get that installed. It is definitely a two-person job doing it this way, but it makes things so much easier. Wouldn't you say, Jeff? No comment. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. That's going to be it for this episode. I'll see you in the next one.